Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs, and this is Ron's Rundown. We're going to go over the MLB game scheduled for Friday, April 19th, 2024. If you like what we see, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comment section below. And if you're looking for my best bets, including my daily rundown best bet in the MLB, you can find those at the premium picks tab at pickdogs.com. There's also a link in the description. Alrighty, here we go. Here are the games for Friday's loaded card in Major League Baseball. First up, we see the Miami Marlins taking on the Chicago Cubs. This is the only afternoon game for the uh, Friday card. It's going to be Jesus Lizardo and Shota Imanaga. You know, two lefties on the mound. you got two teams that offensively have very, very different numbers against lefties as the Cubs are arguably the best lineup in baseball right now against South Pauses. They're number one in Team OPS. Their isolated power numbers are number one in baseball. A low strikeout rate, just below 17%. Walk rate right around league average, but you look at the Marlins on the flip side, they're you know second to last in team OPS, only ahead of the White Sox of all teams, and they're actually worse than the White Sox in isolated power against lefties. The strikeout rate is not bad, but the walk rate is one of the lowest in the league, and Imanaga has been you know much stronger. While I think both of these starting pitchers will be solid options towards the end of the year, Imanaga no earned runs given up, while Luzardo's got that ERA above 7.5. You look at the struggles for the Marlins bullpen. I got to go with the Chicago Cubs in this one and lay the one and a half runs. Next up, we see the Los Angeles Angels taking on the Cincinnati Reds. No official lineup for this game right now, but we should see Tyler Anderson and Nick Lodolo as the projected starters. Another game with a pair of southpaws on the mound. And, you know, this is a matchup. We got Nick Lodolo pitched really, really well in his season debut, but we got to, you know, take that with a little bit of a grain of salt because that was against the Chicago White Sox. And we know, the, I just mentioned, the White Sox, some of the worst numbers against lefties in the league and offensively in general this year. So a lot of pitchers have done really well against the White Sox this season. Now you're facing the Angels, who have much, much better numbers against those lefties. And actually, the Reds do as well. And that's why it make, makes me lean towards the over in this game, because we're at Great American Ballpark. we got two teams that are in the top five right now in isolated power against lefties and the top ten in, in uh, Team OPS against lefties. The Angels' strikeout rate and walk rate really solid. That could be an issue for Nick Lodolo, who is, you know, somebody I would consider a strikeout dependent guy. Sometimes has issues with the control. Maybe has some walk problems in this game. Tyler Anderson didn't have his best start last game, and I'm a little bit concerned. You know, that was at Fenway Park. He gave up two home runs in that one, two bad mistake pitches in that game, and ended up four and a third innings and three earned runs against the Red Sox uh, in, in a loss in that one for the Angels. So. Didn't love that outing. I think the Reds will be able to get to him. And, you know, this has been one of the more powerful lamps in baseball in terms of uh, leading the league or top 10 in baseball and home runs, extra base hits. So I'm going to go with the over here in this Angels-Reds game. You add to the fact I don't love either of these bullpens, give me the over. Next up, we see the Chicago White Sox taking on the Philadelphia Phillies. We're going to see Garrett Crochet and Spencer Turnbull as the starters. You know, Garrett Crochet's pitched very well this season. He's been, I would say, the MVP of the White Sox so far. However, he is coming off his weakest start of the year. And, you know, when you look at this White Sox team, it's just there's like no margin for error for this team. There's no wiggle room because of their offense struggling as much as it has. We mentioned the struggles against lefties, but they have not been much better against righties. And you look at the team through 18 games, they're 3-15. and 15. The win-loss record is poor, obviously, on paper. But beyond that, they've been shut out six different times in their first 18 games. And of those 18, they've only scored five or more runs in three of the 18 games. So the offense is really, really struggling, even in their wins. Like we saw in the, you know, the last game, they beat the Royals. They only scored two runs. So in a game like this, if Crochet gives up you know, two, three runs and the White Sox bullpen gives up another two or three runs, the game should be over. I mean, the White Sox just haven't been able to compete offensively. Turnbull's been pitching really well for Philadelphia. And, uh, you know, the Phillies numbers against lefties, so-so to start the year. But last year, they had great numbers against Southpaws. I expect them to get better as the season goes along. And like I said, Crochet's coming off that weak start. Certainly wasn't his best. Now the ERA above 3.5 on the season after starting really, really strong. He gave up five earned runs in that game to the Cincinnati Reds. And that was a 5-0 win. The White Sox offense did not compete. I worry that we're going to see something similar in this game. Give me the Phillies laying the one-and-a-half runs. Next up, we see the Boston Red Sox taking on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Brian Bayo for Boston, no official starter for Pittsburgh. You know, this is an interesting matchup here. I like the under. I think that, that Bayo actually matches up pretty well in this game. Somebody that has had some issues with the home run ball, which is a, a big concern, but I still consider him a ground ball specialist. And his ground ball to fly ball ratio is starting to get a little bit better. And he's facing a Pirates team that is near the top of the league in terms of ground ball percentage. Uh, you know, they hit the ball on the ground very, very often. So I think that benefits Brian Bayo who has still pitched well with sub-4 ERA, starting to miss some more bats as well. Had eight strikeouts in that last game against the Angels through five and a third innings of two-run baseball. 
The Red Sox bullpen, while there are some you know injury concerns with the pitching staff as a whole, the bullpen's actually been pretty solid when you look at the expected numbers. Same thing with the Pittsburgh Pirates. We'll have to see who their official starter is, but I don't, also don't love this Red Sox lineup right now, and especially away from Fenway Park. So I'm going to go with the under here in Pittsburgh, Boston. Next up, we see the Houston Astros taking on the Washington Nationals. Justin Verlander making his season debut. He'll be facing Mackenzie Gore on the other side. Now, I don't think we can trust the Houston Astros, especially at this kind of price. I mean, Verlander, like I said, making a season debut. He pitched in a couple of uh, rehab starts in the minor leagues in AA and AAA, and he did not pitch well in those games at all. Uh, when you look at the combined numbers, seven innings, 14 base hits, uh, 13 runs, 11 of those were earned, and it's not like it was just one bad outing. It was five earned in AA, six earned in AAA in those two starts. He had nine strikeouts, so it was nice to see him miss some bats, but uh, we know last year his strikeout numbers really plummeted. He only had 7.7 Ks per nine with the Mets, 8.3 with the Astros, and this is a Washington Nationals team that does a great job at limiting those strikeouts, so I worry about Verlander early in this game. Now, Mackenzie Gore, you know, I mentioned at the beginning of the season, didn't love his start against the Pirates. He's been able to sharpen up quite a bit in his last two games where he goes uh, uh, 10 and two-thirds innings combined of two-run baseball, 17 strikeouts. This is a tough matchup. There's no doubt about it. The Astros are just still a very solid lineup, especially against left-handed pitching. I think they'll get be able to get to Gore for a few runs, but this Nationals bullpen's been the far better bullpen comparing these two teams, and I think Verlander can give up you know plenty of runs early in this one. I also don't think he pitches too deep into this ball game. They don't want to stretch him in his first start of the season. So I'm going to go with the Washington Nationals here. I think the value firmly lies with Washington at home. Next up, we see the Oakland Athletics taking on the Cleveland Guardians. Joe Boyle and Tristan McKenzie are your starters. You know, the Guardians took the first series between these two back in Oakland. That was at the beginning of the season. And uh, they pretty much dominated that series. I mean, they won it three games to one. And the first three games were all wins by all uh, via the run line as well. Eight nothing, six to four, and 12 to three. A couple of blowouts in there. And even the final game where the A's actually, you know, were able to win, it was a game where they were up 3 0, and the Cleveland rallied late. They had a really good chance of winning that game. They tied it, and then they lost in a walk off fashion on a walk off walk, uh, unfortunately. But still, Cleveland's a very dangerous team against Oakland. They played really well against them over the, over the last couple of years, and I, I like their matchup here. You know, Joe Boyle, somebody that's strikeout dependent that has some control issues, and I think Cleveland can really benefit from that. They don't strike out much, they have good numbers OPS wise, and honestly, isolated power wise uh, against righties to start the season. And Tristan McKenzie, don't love the form that he's in right now, but I, I think he'll be good enough for the Guardians' bullpen and bats to take care of the rest. I could see him giving up a few runs early, but like I said, this Guardians' bullpen, even though the A's' bullpen's been very impressive, Cleveland's bullpen, ERA, I think sub-3 right now going into the uh, Thursday game with the Red Sox. So I'm going to go with the Cleveland Guardians in this one on the money line. Next up is the Texas Rangers taking on the Atlanta Braves. Chris Sale and Nathan Avaldi are your starters I think Evaldi is the better starting pitching option in this game, but I just trust the Braves' bats more in a matchup like this because you know, the, the Rangers against lefties have not been great. They're 25th in team OPS. Isolated power, not much better. The strikeout rate and walk rate, not too shabby, but Chris Sale, I, I think while he struggled mightily in that last game, he still was able to go seven innings with seven strikeouts against the Marlins, and I think he bounces back here at home where his only home start of the season was a five-and-a-third, two-run uh, performance, six strikeouts against a very good Diamondbacks lineup in a 5-2 to two Braves win. Avaldi, like I said, I think you know he's pitching very, very well, but the last game was not his best. He gave up those five earned runs, gave up two home runs, and now you're facing a Braves lineup that we know crushes right into pitching. So give me the Atlanta Braves in this one on the money line. Next up, we see the Baltimore Orioles taking on the Kansas City Royals. Dean Kramer and Alec Marsh are your starters. And we saw the Royals play in a pretty low-scoring series this week against the White Sox, but I expect this series to be a little bit different. I like the over in this game at least. I mean, Alec Marsh and Dean Kramer both faced the opposition uh, towards the beginning of the season, their first starts of the year, and I think that benefits the lineup in the second meeting in, in, the less, in less than a month. As, uh, you know, Marsh pitched well in that game against Baltimore, seven innings of one-run ball, but since that start, he's gone nine and two-thirds innings of seven earned run baseball with a home run and only five strikeouts to go with it. The Royals have been able to win his ball games, but we saw last game, 11-7 to final score. You know, I think he's going to pitch another high-scoring game here. On the other side, Dean Kramer, he was one of the more profitable pitchers in baseball last season. So far this year, the Orioles only 1-2 and two in his starts, and that last game we saw six earned runs and eight total runs given up in an 11-5 loss for the Baltimore Orioles. So both starting pitchers coming off high-scoring games. you got two strong offenses that I trust a lot, especially at Kauffman Stadium. Give me the over here in Baltimore, Kansas City. Next up, we see the Milwaukee Brewers taking on the St. Louis Cardinals. Freddie Peralta and Kyle Gibson are your starters. 
Freddie Peralta has been very, very solid this year for Milwaukee. 2-0 with that 2.55 ERA. He's missing bats. He's got 26 strikeouts in 17 and two-thirds innings. The control is always a little bit of a concern with Peralta. Hasn't been a worry, you know, so far this year. Only two walks in those 17 and two-thirds. No walks the last game against the Orioles. The Brewers are 3-0 in his first three starts. He's just been excellent. One of the, you know, better pitchers in the National League so far. Kyle Gibson on the other side was pitching well for St. Louis. His last couple of games, though, not great. 11 earned runs in 12 innings of work against the Marlins and Diamondbacks. Two losses for the Cardinals. And now you enter the Milwaukee Brewers, who are great against righties this season. When you look at the numbers, they're actually top five in team OPS and isolated power against the right-handed pitchers. Low strikeout rate to go with it. I'm going to go with the Milwaukee Brewers here on the money line on the road. Next up, we see the New York Yankees taking on the Tampa Bay Rays. Tyler Alexander and Clark Schmidt are your starters. Should be a fun series. Usually is between these two big rivals in the American League East. I'm going to side with the Yankees in this one. I like Clark Schmidt on the mound to start this game. He's pitched well. I mean, last game, five innings, one earned run, and seven strikeouts against the Guardians of all teams. I mean, we know Cleveland, they do a great job of limiting strikeouts, and, you know, Schmidt was excellent in that game. And the Yankees are 3-0 and in his first three starts of the year. But all three of those wins were one-run victories. So maybe pass on the run line for this one. Just take the money line. You know, Alexander on the other side, he pitched pretty well in that last game. It was his first quality start of the season against San Francisco, but yet again, he gave up another home run, makes it you know five home runs his first 15 and third innings of the year. And you know, slow starters on the Yankees, guys like Glaber Torres without a home run, Aaron Judge, you know, slow start. I think those guys can have a big day here against the lefty and Alexander. I expect the Yankees to win this game in the end. Not my favorite game on the board, but I'm leaning with the Yankees on the money line. Next up, we see the Minnesota Twins taking on the Detroit Tigers. Jack Flaherty and Joe Ryan are the projected starters. Yeah, I mentioned a couple of games ago with Alec Marsh and Dean Kramer facing the opposition for the same time, you know, in the, in the same month. It's not easy for any starting pitcher to do that, but I actually think both of these starting pitchers match up well with the team they just faced, and I, I think we're going to see a low-scoring game again uh, in this one between two offenses that are near the bottom of the league in, in OPS, isolated power against righties start the season. You got, you know, Flaherty went a quality start against these twins, six and a third inning, three runs, six, uh, eight strikeouts. Joe Ryan went 12 strikeouts through six innings of one run baseball and uh, a game that ended up being high scoring. But, you know, Ryan was excellent in his first six innings. And I think we see both starting pitchers pitch well. I like the under in the full game because I trust both of these bullpens, even though that that Joe Ryan start went, you know, 11 to five in extra innings. I, still, the Twins have one of the better bullpens in baseball. The Tigers' bullpen's been really impressive. So I'm going to go with the under here. I think both starters can put together another quality start. The bullpens take care of business. Give me the under and Twins-Tigers. Next up, we see the Colorado Rockies taking on the Seattle Mariners. Emerson Hancock and Dakota Hudson are your starters. In the Rockies, I know it's been tough to start the year 4-15 and in the win-loss record. But a large majority of those games have been on the road. We know, you know the, the Rockies play a lot better at Coors Field. Then they do away from home, and you know, they, they, they're 2-4 and four in their first six games, of course, but of those six games, they were all against playoff team from last year, the Rays and the Diamondbacks. This matchup and this series, I think, is going to be you know, pretty beneficial for Colorado, as I think Dakota Hudson's honestly the better starting pitching option. I'm not going to say that very often this year, but uh, you know his, his only course field start of the season was a quality start. Six innings, three runs, you'll take that all day long from Dakota Hudson. It was no home runs, only the one walk. It was, you know, he gave his team a chance to win in that game. He's been honestly been, he's been able to give his team a chance to win almost every start this season. And I think he does that again here. And you know, on the other side, Emerson Hancock, who's got an ERA above seven, the expected numbers aren't great. This is going to be his first career Coors Field start. He's a young pitcher. That's never an easy thing. And, you know, the Rockies, I think they get to him for a few runs. I don't love this Rockies bullpen. And like I said, I don't love Dakota Hudson in general, but the Mariners offense has been very inconsistent. This could be a series where they break out a bit. Some of their slow starters like Julio Rodriguez get going. But uh, to me, the value is certainly with the Rockies in this one. So give me the Colorado Rockies on the money line. Next up, we see the Toronto Blue Jays taking on the San Diego Padres. Yariel Rodriguez and Matt Waldron are your starters. You know, Rodriguez pitched pretty well in his Major League debut. He didn't really pitch deep in that game. It was only three and two-thirds innings. But only one run given up. He had six strikeouts. And it was a Blue Jays win and run line cover in the end. I think this is a much different matchup, though. That was against the Rockies, and the Rockies were on the road, you know, one of the weaker laps in baseball. Now you're on the road yourself, and you're facing a Padres team that's got really good numbers offensively to start the year, mostly against lefties, but even against righties, they're top 10 in team OPS. And the big thing is they have a very low strikeout rate, sub 20% as a team. That's beneficial for, you know, for, for, the, for the Padres because Rodriguez... He has great strikeout stuff, but the control's always been a concern in minor league action and sometimes gives sharp contact as well. So 
I think this could be a really you know tough outing for Rodriguez. And then when you look at the Blue, Blue Jays bullpen, while I think there's a ton of talent and they, and they just got a lot of uh, talented arms back from injury and Jordan uh, Romano and Eric Swanson, they still have not pitched very much you know in the offseason. And we saw them struggle in their first couple of outings. We saw Romano get the uh, save opportunity against the Yankees in game two of that series. He gave up a run and it almost, you know, it was it was really close for you know, being a blown save in general. And then Eric Swanson, we know what happened with that, a blown save, and the Yankees won that game outright. So the Blue Jays are kind of forcing those relievers who haven't pitched very much, they're putting them in you know critical moments early on. It's a little bit dicey, I think, and I worry about that. If, if this game is close late, I think the Padres have the advantage, even though I don't love the Padres' bullpen overall. I think it's in a better spot here, and I think Matt Waldron has pitched really, really well this season. I mean, his last two games, 10 and a third innings, one earned run against the Giants and Dodgers, both of those games on the road. Nine strikeouts to go with it. I'm going to go with the San Diego Padres in this one. I'm going to take them on the money line. Next up, we see the New York Mets taking on the Los Angeles Dodgers. Shaw Manaya and Yoshinobu Yamamoto are the starters. Yeah, the minute I say that, I, oh, I think I was wrong about Shaw Manaya. I actually think it was a great pickup for the New York Mets. He struggles in that last game against the Kansas City Royals. Six earned runs, eight total runs, and three and two-thirds innings, nine base hits, and an 11-7 blowout loss. And, uh, you know, I think Manaya still, you look at his spring training, you look at the first two games of the season, pitched really, really well. I mean, he faced the Reds, who have got great numbers against lefties, and he was excellent in that game. So I expect him to bounce back at some point, but it doesn't really get easier in this spot on the road against a Dodgers team that's played well against the Mets over the years, and a Dodgers team that's getting better and better against lefties. And speaking of getting better and better, Yoshinobu Yamamoto has been exactly that for the Dodgers who struggled in his, last, in his first start of the season in his major league debut in Korea. It was one inning of five earned run baseball against the Padres. But since then, in his last 15 innings, he's only given up three earned runs. His strikeout numbers are there. The home runs, you know, last game gave up a couple home runs, but that was against San Diego again, a team he'd already struggled against. So I think he bounces back from you know, an okay start in that San Diego game. And I think he pitches well in this one. I think the Dodgers win this game and come with the run line. Give me L.A. laying the one and a half runs. Next up, we see the Arizona Diamondbacks taking on the San Francisco Giants, the final game for the Friday card in Major League Baseball. Jordan Montgomery and Blake Snell, a pair of lefties on the mound in this one. Now, I mentioned, you know, the first game for Blake Snell where he was pitching against the Washington Nationals. We took the Nationals in that game, and I mentioned we're looking to fade Blake Snell early in the season, maybe his first five starts or so until he gets going. You know, it was a, he had a very, very short offseason for him, didn't get to pitch in spring training, and he's already been known to be a very, very slow starter. So, you know, we cashed with the Nationals. The next game, it was kind of a tough matchup to fade Snell. And, you know what, Snell struggled again. We should have faded him. He gave up seven earned runs and four innings of work in a 9-4 to four Rays win. In this spot, you'd say, all right, let's go back to, you know, what, what we know works. And that's going against Snell early in the season, backing him later in the season. However, you're facing Jordan Montgomery, who's kind of in the same boat as Blake Snell. He was another late offseason signing for the Arizona Dimebacks. And he didn't get to pitch in spring training. He did. He pitched a couple of rehab starts. Was not very good in those outings. So to me, you're facing a Giants lineup that's been much better against lefties. Jordan Montgomery is going to make a season debut after not pitching much in the offseason and struggling in the rehab starts. I expect the Giants bats to get after Montgomery. The question is, can we trust Blake Snell? I'm not so sure. I mean, after that game against the Rays, seven earned runs, six base hits, two walks, and two home runs. I don't think so. Arizona's got great numbers against lefties, and they provide a pretty tough matchup for a starting pitcher like Snell, who's very strikeout dependent. So to me, even though we're at Oracle Park, which, which is you know pretty much a pitcher-friendly ballpark, I like the over here in Arizona-San Francisco with a lean to the San Francisco Giants on the money line, but I'd rather just take the over because this Giants bullpen's also not been very good, so give me the over. And that's it. Those are the games for Friday in baseball. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe, and don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comments section below. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Ron Ronelli. Good luck.